1 Samuel chapter 15 is where we're going. The Word has been great today, uh, doing what only the Word of God can do. And what we have been doing is building culture here. And we've been building culture that is foremost acceptance and then deliverance. Deliverance is the fruit of acceptance. Now, I have a, a word for you that I don't think you're going to really like but I want you to realize that you're not going into your destiny without deliverance. Appreciate your desire, but, but, but you cannot go into the future a slave. In order to have your destiny, you must be delivered. Come on, point, point to somebody and say, you're not getting destiny without deliverance. You have to be delivered. And it doesn't mean that you have to be perfect. But it means you've got to be free. And it means you can't be controlled by anything that God does not want. The, the type of space, let me talk to you, that God has called you to go into demands freedom to enjoy it. I said the type of space, the types of relationships, the types of resources, the type of fluidity and, and flexibility that God is sending in your life requires freedom to really enjoy it. So what you're going through now, praise God, I feel like, I, I said what you're facing now, the pressure you're under, the test you're facing, the standard you're having to live on, it's all practice for where you're going. And Paul said it this way, that the sufferings of this present time, go with me, come on, if you go with me, we'll get there quicker. I said the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory not the glitter but the glory that shall be revealed in you so i've been trying to preach the type of a word that provokes deliverance that helps people welcome those that need to be delivered and you're probably more delivered than what you've been but there was a time where you were not delivered. Now, you can lie to the person next to you, but there was a time when you was much more bound than what you are. Now, you're still working out a few kinks in your deliverance, but there was a time when you lived like a slave. Why are you doing this? You talked like a slave. You behaved like a slave. You related like a slave. But God showed you that freedom was possible and what it required was that you could have faith that he could free you. So we've got to be the type of a church where people can come, praise God, and see enough free people and say, I want that. Oh, come on. I, how, how many of you know that's what God wants to do with you? He wants to make you a brandable marketing strategy of his where somebody can walk in a slave and see you and say, now, if you can set that demon free, if you can loose that lunatic, if you can heal that hole, I know you can. This one o'clock, we got to go 100 miles per hour. If you can deliver that depressed person, if you can make that lust bucket holy, then surely I am not undeliverable. Do it for me. I hear creation say, do it for me. But if he's going to do it for them, he's got to do it in you. I got a word for you. I shall not come by I feel my help coming through right now. Woo! I'm, I'm trying to get to my text, but somebody just needed a little encouragement in their delivery. Somebody needed some encouragement. Keep on getting free. I know it feels like you ain't gonna ever be done with this. Who am I talking to? But deliverance comes in layers and levels. And I know you're tired right now, and the devil is messing with you. You like if it ain't this, is that? Come on, let him get to the core. Because when he's got to the core, he's going to raise you up. That's what he does for the delivered once he's finished with you he shows off on you so that somebody can find faith to say yes to God lift your hands say I'm willing let him finish hey hey ho let him finish let him finish let him finish I feel like preaching right here let him finish 
Stop getting off the operating table prematurely. Let them finish. Don't stop at just one level of deliverance. Find a way to take it deeper. Let the man finish because you are more worth it to us once you're healed for real. Let him finish. Praise God. Hallelujah. First Samuel 15. Verse 1. Samuel, turn there now. Open your Bible your big head self. 1 Samuel 15 verse 1 says Samuel said to Saul I am the one the Lord sent you to anoint king over his people Israel. So listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Now look, pay attention. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel. Now look at me. I, this is not my message, but this is a prophecy to whoever wants it. God is not going to let your generational oppressors go unconfronted. I don't know who needs to hear that right now, but I'm speaking to you from the prophetic office and you better hear me. If you have faith for it, God is going to visit that that has oppressed your bloodline through you. Did you hear what I said? He is not going to remain silent. The Lord of hosts is going to visit the Amalekites. I will punish the Amalekites for what they did to Israel when they waylaid them as they came up out of Egypt. The instructions were this, Prophet Kiva. Now go, attack the Amalekites, totally destroy all that belongs to them. Do not spare them. Put to death men. I want you to kill men. I want you to kill women. Samuel wasn't playing. I want you to kill their babies. Get them, kill them all. He said, kill children and kill cattle. Kill infants, kill sheep, kill dogs, cats, gerbils, roaches, rats, squirrels, pigeon. Kill them all. So Saul summons the men and mustered them at Talem, 200 foot soldiers and 10,000 from Judah. I want you to go to verse 7 real quick. Pay attention to this. This is going to be important. Then Saul attacked the Amalekites all the way from Hebelah to Shur near the eastern border of Egypt. But he took Agag. Say, hey, Agag. Repeat after me. Hey, Agag. He is the king of the Amalekites. Pay attention. He took the king of the Amalekites alive all his people he destroyed with the sword but Saul and the army spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the cattle and the calves and the lambs and everything that was good please pay attention because I, I feel like preaching to myself these they were unwilling to destroy completely. But everything that was despised and weak, they destroyed totally. Now I want you to go all the way down, all the way down to verse 32. Don't worry about it. I'll tell you what happened in the meantime, but I got to get to my point. 32 is Samuel! Samuel said to him, Bring me Agag, the king of the Amalekites. Agag came to him in chains. And Agag thought, Surely the worst part of this is over. The bitterness of death is past. But Samuel said, As your sword has made many women childless, so will your mama be childless among women. And Samuel rent Agag to pieces before the Lord at Gigal. Look at somebody say, neighbor, you don't know me. I killed Agag. I shot the sheriff, but I 
did not shoot the moon. This scripture is so important to the unbothered culture. And it's important because it shows the power of completing an instruction from God. There is not just power in giving God initial obedience. The real power is in finishing the job. And many of us, when we're in faith, we hear instructions in, from God in courage. We hear it in willingness. We hear it in willfulness. But if it gets too ugly in the journey, many of us leave our obedience at the start. And we don't fight to keep that obedience to the death. And we know this story, hopefully, but I'm going to assume you don't. First of all, can I just say that Samuel is my all-time favorite person in the Bible? Maybe it's because it's birthday season for me, so I've really been studying dude one more time. And what I love about Samuel is his unbothered nature. First of all, dude had a threefold anointing. Number one, he was anointed as a priest. It was his job to understand the spiritual protocratics and the spiritual bureaucracy and the spiritual policies that appeased God on the behalf of dirty people. You'll get that tomorrow. I know you're not intelligent enough to get that now. So go back tomorrow and watch that. He was called for dirty people. He was not assigned for the righteous. His assignment was to offer to God, to appease God, to keep God in remembrance of what he wanted out of the unclean. Now, because he was a priest, he had to be clean, but he had to use his cleanliness to represent the dirty. And he had to use God's purification of him to stand before God to remind God of his will towards the profane. He was a priest. He understood offerings and altars and sacrifices and seasons. And then he was a judge, praise God. He was not unfamiliar with having to make war on the behalf of God. He was the last deliverer. And if my scriptural integrity serves me well, it gets worse in every season of leadership. So I think he was probably the strongest of the era of the deliverers. And I'll prove it in a minute. But he had to be stronger than Deborah and stronger than the rest of them because it was through him that he closed out the era and opened up the monarchy. So that shows us the type of person that Samuel had to be. He was a man who carried beginnings and endings in his mouth. When he opened up his mouth, he started a season and he closed a season. This is why when he came to town, Ricky, they would always ask him, do you come in peace? And his answer would be like mine. It depends on who I'm visiting. <laughs> they didn't know what he was coming to do. Bless or curse, heal or kill. They didn't really know his mantle was that dense that one visit could ruin you or resurrect you he had beginnings and endings in him he was also the type of a prophet that carried kings he was not just one that recognized them he had to carry them and the thing about it was he carried good and bad kings he was the one who rebuked Saul and the kingdom departed but was also the one that nurtured David until David could have his own walk with God and so he was nurtured through the mantle of Samuel as a prophet and the most prominent seer in the Old Testament he literally, listen to me he literally catechized the revelatory life of Israel and basically what that means is he streamlined all of the seers and dreamers and watchmen and he said I tell you what I know before me y'all were used to doing your own thing and growing at your own speed and studying what you want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to revolutionize this thing and I'm going to create the public school system. What you did not know is public academics was birthed through Samuel. There was no such thing as public education before the school of the prophets. So 
Samuel was in charge of teaching them poetry, history, law, song, music. That's why when David builds his tabernacle, he builds it on the training of his predecessor Samuel. Samuel taught David the importance of music and I can prove that because the Bible said that when it was time to crown Saul, Saul Samuel went to his personal college and pulled some singing prophets from his students and sent them to sing over Saul so he was a bad man <laughs> he was amazing powerful and we find that he walks up to his spiritual son I'm talking about being unbothered and he gives his spiritual son King Saul a test you have got to kill Agag the king of this kingdom and the entire kingdom your king Remember, he starts the text, Matthew, by saying, I'm the one God sent to anoint you as king. This is your job. Put your hand on your chest. I'm, I, I want you to have a reality check. Obey me. Put your hand on your chest. Say, this is my job. Come on, say, this is my job. Say, this is my job. God! It's trying to deliver you from your fear of responsibility. He's trying to set you free from your inability to handle the pressures of other people's freedom. It's a lot on the heart to realize what will happen if you don't do what God called you to do. And in this season, God is not just trying to get you to do what you like to do. He's trying to get you to do something where he can get maximum use out of your life. Put your hand on your chest and say, this is my job. I can't hear you say, this is my job. If you don't get free, there will be people that never know God for real. You are the, your lifestyle is going to be the door. Who am I talking to? Your career is going to be the incision. What you write, your marriage, your family is the opening and is the opportunity for the Lord to reveal himself to people you don't know. And dangerous things happen when men or women don't do their jobs. He told Saul, this is your job. Your job, Amber, is to kill the Amalekites. I'm anointing you to make war with an army that's been harassing my people. I'm anointing you to invade, to go and find the vulnerable places that allowed Israel to be permeated by these terrorists. I want you to inspect and surveillance the surrounding areas to find how the critters got there, how the flesh eaters got there. This is your job. I want you to do this, and I want you to not spare anybody. Not only do you need to kill the king, pay attention, I want you to get the king's wife, get the king's mistress, get their kids. Why? Because if you don't kill this thing from the head, you'll get it in a minute, then the offspring is going to grow up and they're going to retaliate on you. Come on, go. If you don't kill this thing and if you don't get the wife, the wife may fool around and find somebody else to marry and empower somebody who was worse than the original king. Kill, 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 kill. Now, if you don't kill the animals or the things that graze, then what's going to happen is the idols that they were dedicated to are going to empower them and forbid them from from being healthy food to eat. Kill the whole kingdom. Get the whole kingdom. Get the whole kingdom. But Saul. Because Saul was Saul. He took the instructions. In initial obedience. And went in warfare. Praise God. Oh I feel like preaching now. I don't care if you hot. He went in warfare. And when he got to the middle, he got exhausted. And now he started rationalizing his instructions from God. Have you ever been in a season of combat? Have you ever been in a season of consecration? And you started off focused. Come on, don't look at me in that tone of voice. You started off hopeful and faithful. You woke your little ugly tail up and was making your decrees. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You was cutting folk off and blocking folk on Facebook. And, and you was telling people you ain't 
go on with me in the future. Stay with the asses. I'm going yonder the way that you ain't go. And then what happened was June came and it got hot outside and you realize that a consecrated life is a lonely life sometime and you started missing your social consequences because of your sanctification and then you started to rationalize what God told you to do because you were tired of doing it the way he told you to do it and it's not enough Puda to do what he said do you got to do it how he said I'm about to conip already I said it's not just enough to obey him in the action you got to obey him in the strategy in the temperature in the pressure of it all and Saul Saul got midway and said I tell you what I'm going to obey you to the point or the degree that it makes sense to me certainly if you want me to destroy this kingdom maybe you meant destroy the parts that are ugly I'm going I'm to I'm destroy O'Shea the parts that everybody thinks is an eyesore I'll come after the obvious stuff and so the Bible said that he left the pretty stuff alone. Can I preach this like I want to? But how many of you know the strongest devils ain't the ugliest one? You're going to make me work hard. You're going to make me work hard. I said the strongest devils ain't the, uh, uh, ain't the ugly ones. The strongest devils are the pretty ones. Most of you don't want the ugly devils. You're like, yeah, get rid of this rejection. Hey, get rid of it. But you don't want nobody messing with your pride. You don't want nobody messing with your control. I'm talking to your watermelon belly tail. You don't want nobody dealing with that. You want yeah, loneliness because it's hard out here to be single but you don't want nobody coming for that lust you still walk around and talking about you a virgin playing with yourself the devil is a liar God is coming for I said that if you didn't have an orgasm you are not a virgin now you can repent and be clean but if you touching yourself it's called fornication hey, hey, hey. glory to God you got to kill the whole kingdom y'all don't want to go here you got to tear the whole thing down I think there are benefits. It keeps me uh, from sleeping with somebody else. Will you show me? Why am I going here? Why? Why am I going here? But you show me how you going to achieve masturbation without fantasy. You tell me how you going to sit there and rape and molest yourself and have a picture of the sun in your mind come on we here right now Jesus said if a man look at the upon a woman or a man or if a woman look at the upon a man or a woman he has already done it in his heart so you don't get points for sleeping with yourself when God has called you to holiness I said holiness I said holiness Somebody say kill the whole kingdom. Oh yes, the devils he is coming after in this season are the pretty devils. The, the devils that you got excuses for. The devils that you got justifications for. The devils that you have reason and patience for. So came to Samuel said I obeyed you I got delivered and I killed it all and Samuel was looking at him unbothered oh did you you killed the whole kingdom uh huh uh huh you killed oh did you straight up oh yeah I saw the picture I saw you checked in oh yeah nice. oh, you did you so I said yeah I, I, I did it and, and, and Samuel said but what's this I hear I hear in the distance the sound of what you left alive. Listen, because as long as you leave it alive, it's going to have a sound. You may be able to hide it from me, but open up your mouth long enough and I'm going to hear your former self. Open up your heart long enough and I'm going to hear your former self. As long as it's alive, it's going to call out from the distance. Samuel I feel 
like preaching, Freddie. Looked at Saul and said, Does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and incense over obedience? Can, can you really appease him by trying to praise him in lieu of your obedience? You think that God wants a dance and don't want you to break up? You, you, you think that God wants a victory lap or a hallelujah or a thank you Jesus when he is asking for yes Lord? Saul is like, okay, you're right. I disobeyed. I did not kill the whole kingdom. I killed half of the kingdom. The people that are called to this church are half breeds. They, they, they have come to a point in their life where they've only done what they could do in their strength. They don't arrive here in mastery. And they don't come here in championship. They don't even come here victorious. Most people that come here are halfway there. That's why God sends them here. Because they've done everything they can do without the next level of help. And they've come everywhere they can without the next level of healing. They have gone as far as they can go without somebody reaching past the stopping point and bringing them beyond their personal level. Limits. Samuel says fine I tell you what since you disobeyed God now God is regretting making you king because kings complete the job you don't get to do a half done season who am I talking to and a half done commitment and you can't give your half self to an instruction and your half self to a vow and walk in here talking about I'm a king I bind I loose you have no authority until you complete who am I talking to you have no weight on your word until you finish the instruction it's obedience that increases your weight in the spirit you ain't got no authority to move nothing you can't bust a grape in a fruit fight if you are disobedient you don't have weight use a lightweight well, Samuel looked at him said the Lord don't want you in charge no more I tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to do what you were too disobedient to do I'm going to go and I'm going to take off my, my prophet's mantle I'm going to take off my priestly garments and I'm going to pick up my fighting skill because I'm still a judge. And I know how to throw these hands. And, 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 and I'm going to kill this thing like you should have. So the Bible says they brought a gag where, where if you're going to really kill a kingdom, you never kill it with the foot soldier. That, that's why many people are in cycles of deliverance for years. You still kicking the little midget devils and you are afraid to pull your life back like an onion to see who is operating. Look at somebody say it's the queen bee. It's the queen bee. Come on tell somebody it's the queen bee. It's the queen bee. There are demons that operate in different oh see now you know at one o'clock you're not supposed to talk about demons but there are demons that operate at different levels of strength. You didn't know that? All of them are not the same. Some of them moving a little strength a lot of them moving a lot of strength and those of you you know the <coughs> those are the easy ones to get rid of the other ones are hidden in your mind and it's called a strong man good God from Zion and around every strong man is a stronghold if you only get the bodyguards and you don't tear the fortress down your life will be lived in ruins Agag comes. He was the one behind all of the death, all of the rape, all of the murder, all of the robbery, all of the kidnapping. He was behind it all. Come on, Zion, help me through here. You've got to realize who's behind what you've gone through. You've got to discern who's the reason why your mama was like she was. You've got to discern what was after your father that impeding him from being what he needed to be. I'm talking about mercy. What you're doing is being too distracted by the flesh. When the Bible said the weapon of our warfare is never carnal. You can look at the actors all 
all you want. God is trying to strengthen you to kill the producers because they're the one that contracted the actors. You can deal with the foot soldiers all you want, but until you get Larry Hoover and break behind them bars, this thing is going to be in replay. But I feel in the pit of my stomach, there's about a hundred of you that's going for the head. Woo! My come from there's about a hundred of you that's like okay I'm done with running like a rat race and I appreciate getting free like this uh, but I feel a second win I said I feel a second win I am more excited about my deliverance than I have ever been before I am more energized about my battle than I've ever been before give me the king give me the king give me the king give me the king I want the king Hey, I want the king. When you live your life like people are your problem and you don't realize that they have been contracted, they're not going to help me today, that, that they have been hired, that they have been recruited by a demonic king who ain't never come off his throne but's been studying you your reactions your responses your strengths and your weaknesses and then he sits perfectly guarded behind your insecurities and perfectly guarded behind your failures and what he does is he sends out a little foot soldier a little offense every now and then a little depression every now and then because his ultimate job is to stay concealed if a king gets exposed then he is vulnerable now which is why he hires gestures to stay around him and many of you have spent most of your adult life fighting the foot soldiers you've been trying to lose all your strength at the smaller issues y'all have been losing strength and faith and hurry, courage off of little mice when the giants have still been unconfronted can I give you a hard word Vicky? but this is the season where God is calling you to take the head off of that thing Come on, go with me. He don't want you running in circles no more. You got to get behind the root of your weight gain and the root of your addiction and the root of your fear. Come on, help. You got to take the head off of that thing. You've been fighting it at the ground level, but I dare you to do some digging and fight through the devilish soldiers and dethrone whoever is claiming your destiny. Shout hallelujah. Give me the king. Give me the king. Give me the king. I want the king. Either you're going to be distracted and you're going to spend this next year sad about what the king did or you're going to go after the king. Either you're going to be depressed about what the king stole or you're going to go after the king. Either you're going to sit and sulk that your life was your life, your parents were your parents, you didn't finish school like you wanted, you didn't travel like you want. Either you're going to sit there and be overwhelmed by the foot shoulders or you're going to wax strong like David. And the first thing you're going to say is, I'm going to pick this up where Saul left off. Saul wouldn't kill it, but I'm coming for Goliath's head. He had no guts to go after it, but I am the reaper. I am the 2.0. I am the upgrade. I let me reintroduce myself. Get right. Give me the king. Give me the king. I ain't never scared. Give me the king. Give me the king. I'm on assignment from the king of kings so I can take this. Again. Came to Samuel like, now you nice. You a good man. You honorable. Watch me, watch me. And the Bible said they brought him bound. They brought him bound. They brought him bound. But he was still alive. They brought him bound, Robert. But he was still alive. It's not until that thing has no pulse. I said it's not until that thing is not breathing that it's not coming back. Binding is a real spiritual warfare weapon. But you can bind it and it not come out.
You've got to do more than bind him in. Let, let, let me break this down to you since you're not responding. There are things that are in you that are on their best behavior now because you don't have the type of money you're going to have. There are things that are in you that ain't worn his head in a long time because you bound it. You've been doing some fasting, doing some prayer, got a little mentor, and so it's sitting in there bound, right? But something's coming. A thief is going to let him out right when you are on the verge of breakthrough and right when you are in your kingdom. That's how the strong man operates. He never comes out premature. But what you got to do is more than bind him. Elbow somebody say more than bind, more than bind. Come on, say more than bind, more than bind. You got to do more than put handcuffs on it. And you got to do more than judge it. And you got to do more than divorce it. You got to kick that out. I, oh, y'all, I'm working in here. The, the devil don't say just bind him. You got to bind him and cast him out. And when he comes out, you can go in. And when he comes out, you can cross over. And when he comes out, you can conquer. And when he comes out, you can break free. And when he comes out, you can acquire. Say, come out! He came bound, but he wasn't dead. Samuel looked at him like this. Agag is like, yeah, I'm bound. See, prophet, I ain't done nothing in a while. I ain't killed nobody for months. I ain't stole from nobody in generations. I've been, I'm a prisoner. I'm bound. And Samuel said, appreciate your prison sentence. Oh, glory, appreciate your handcuffs. Appreciate your, your public defender, but I'm about to take you from death row to the grave in the same way that your mother made people childless. Now your mama is going to cry over you. You know what that means? Whoever sent this devil to your life, whoever was responsible for carrying this damage full term, whoever was responsible for giving birth to what is to rash you, God's about to make the mama cry. Y'all don't want to have church with me. God's going to make the mama cry. He's killing the horse and the rider. The mother and the child. He's killing the fruit and the tree. He's digging it up from the valley. Digging it up from the roots. Somebody say, out! I love this. I'm done. But Samuel had never shown signs of violence. He had never swung on anybody. We don't see him manifesting bipolarism and emotional dysfunction. All we see is that he was sad over Saul. But apparently dude was strong. Because I don't know about you, but I have never imagined the type of strength it takes to walk up to a human being and rip him limb from limb. The Bible says he tore him to pieces in front of the Lord. So Samuel wasn't walking around lowly and meek. He, he had to have waxed strong. He, he had to have been a well-developed person. This is why God has put a development mandate on you because he don't want you going after kings underdeveloped. He knows that if you're not strong enough for what you've got to kill, then what you've got to kill is going to kill you. I dare you to develop the word of the Lord to you is develop in this season. You got it, but it's got to be better. You got it, but it's got to be stronger. You got it, but it's got to be much more better. Come on, come on, come on. Develop. Come on, elbow somebody. Tell them develop. Develop. Whatever your skills are, make it better than it was. Whatever your anointing is, make it better than what it was. If you will sing, sing under more power. If you will preach, preach under more power. Make it better. Elbow somebody say better better you are in a season where God is calling you to be better than what you were before if you are a good wife I tell you to be a better wife if you are a good husband be a better husband because the stronger you are the weaker he gets the stronger you are the more likely you'll finish the stronger you are Develop. Don't just do it. Develop. Stop making people see an unfinished product. Develop that thing. Develop that thing. Don't be afraid to develop, Samuel. 
Samuel was used to developing. He had to develop his ability to hear God. He had to develop his ability to recognize kings. He had to develop the ability to not judge people by their outer appearance. Remember, he almost anointed the wrong king because of how he looked. That was a developmental issue. So when God developed Samuel, Samuel now could develop other people. It's well-developed people that can take the head off of kings. And many of you are guilty of hating having to be developed. Don't like developmental relationships, developmental opportunities, and development and practice are not the same. Development and rehearsal are not the same. When you are being developed, you must feel overwhelmed. When you are being developed, you have to almost break down. Oh, y'all don't want to have church with me. When you are developed, you have to doubt whether you can even do this or not. It, when you are being developed, you have to feel like you're about to die trying to do it. You ain't being developed until you feel like you was going to die trying. But I dare you right now to make up your mind. I'm about to do this if I feel like I'm dying. The worst case scenario is that the life giver is going to have to bring me back. But I'm going to die trying. I'm going to die trying. I'm going to die trying lady with this flowers on you look at me pumpkin you with the weekend vibes move over just a little bit you with the flowers as I was preaching the angel of the Lord took me up out of my body and he showed me Louisiana and he showed me men and women of Creole descent and he said tell her that what her grandmother could not get that I'm going all the way past Baton Rouge all the way in the state of Louisiana and I'm bringing her the head of that thing I went to that front porch right in front of that river and I'm gonna bring her the head you have not cried in vain you have not fasted in vain God's chosen you to take the head off of that thing slap somebody and say take the head off slap them hard say take the head off Off with his head, off with his head, off with his head, off with his head. Give me that head. I want depression, I want poverty, I want lust, I want rejection. Slap these people say off, 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 off. Come on, tell somebody off, 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 off. I want the head, I want the head, I want the head, I want the head. Focus yourself. Gird your loins. Finish those assignments. In one minute, the foot soldiers are going to be too afraid to mess with you. In one minute, they're not coming back to fool with you because you can outgrow a foot soldier in this next phase of your life. The little devils are going to hide. They're like, she ain't quit yet. He ain't went back yet. Maybe we need a stronger devil. Don't you lose your energy over the foot soldiers. God's about to open the fortress walls. He's about to send the spears down. He's going to allow you the opportunity to have the right temperature outside he's going to change where the sun sits so you can do a sneak attack on the devil and they'll never see you coming they'll never see you coming look at somebody say I want the head off with his head it's time Jared friend it's time time Ivy get stronger are you listening to me get stronger Rocky get stronger what you think is peace is the foot soldiers deciding ain't much we can do with her he didn't outgrown us but what they're doing is moving out the way because O'Shea God gives peace to protect your perspective. He's given you peace so you can see what the real battle is. You have killed all the low stuff. Now you're in for the fight of your life. Opt all the way in. 
Priest lifted up and an anointing just hit here. An anointing for strength just hit this place. Prophesy me in that realm. God wants you to opt all the way in. Because you can't be an uncommitted king. You, you, you represent more than what you are aware of. Now I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to lift your heart and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Because he's trying to make you stronger than what you face. Come on. There you go. Go for what you know right here. <laughs>